Hey everyone, Jason here, Aspiring Entrepreneur, and today I wanted to share with you a 20-day experiment where I monetize the top 15 videos on this channel. So I wanna go through how this affected the numbers and more importantly, how it didn't affect the numbers. And then at the end of the video, a little bit of a personal update around how I actually had to turn monetization on across the entire channel. Otherwise, this entire project would have gone broke. So before we dive into that emotional roller coaster, let's take a look at this data. So I'm gonna put on my glasses here because I ran out of contacts and we're gonna zoom on in here to my screen and we'll just take a look at how monetization actually affected the views on my channel. And the short answer is it really didn't. Like the only thing <laughs> that I could tell differently with this experiment was the average view duration popped a little bit. And this is for the top 15 videos on my channel, which account for about 60% of the views. And we'll get into individual videos in a little bit here. And so just looking at this data, I'm not gonna go through it. You can pause if you're really interested, but you can see average view duration went up a little bit, watch time went down a little bit. But other than that, I mean, estimated revenue is 200 versus zero, right? Because the control, there were no monetized ads. But we go down here to the average view duration and we see that it's up a little percentage points, but nothing too major, nothing too big. And now what I really thought was going to happen here was, oh, let me scroll up so you can see the previous period. So August 7th through the 27th is the test and the previous period is the control. So what I thought I would see is once I monetize the videos that I might actually get a little bit of a boost from YouTube suggesting my content. This chart, however, shows that that's not really the case. It's pretty, pretty much the same. In fact, YouTube suggested went down when I turned on monetization. You can see here in the red, the dark red is when monetization was enabled on those videos versus not enabled. So that was that was a little that was a little weird. So I do want to go through individual uploads so you can see how this actually affected some of the videos that are in the top 15. I'm not actually going to be able to show you all of the videos and I'll get to that in I think video number three. When we go through video number three, I'll explain why I can't do that. So three of the top five saw a reduction in views and recommending content, and I really thought it would be the reverse. So Let's take a look, this Google Ads tutorial, we can see here 49% in the previous period was suggested by YouTube in terms of impressions. Whereas when I turned on ads, it dropped down to 35%. And even though the impressions dropped, I see a little bump in click-through rate and average view duration, really nothing to write home about here. These are all within a standard deviation of what I would call just normal fluctuations in views or click-through rate. So here we have a 9% click-through rate, 9.3%, like 0.3%. That doesn't mean anything. Like who knows what actually accounted for that 0.3%. We can see here YouTube recommending content actually dropped again. Now Udemy was this one. Udemy again, you can see here YouTube recommending content. It went from 35% down to 31%. You can see the impressions are pretty much dropping for a lot of these. Now the Canva tutorial was one of the few ones that actually went up here. So you can see it went up to 27% being suggested versus 24% the previous period, but that's definitely an outlier compared to all the other videos. And we'll just go through the ClickFunnels one is pretty much the same, like it's barely a percentage point higher. So, Based upon these numbers, monetization doesn't have any significant impact on the performance of your video. Now, something interesting to note, I saw a huge bump in the initial views some of my videos got last week when I enabled monetization as they were posted. So that's actually an experiment I wasn't planning on running, but I will run that just to be sure to see if there's any long-term effect if monetization is turned on immediately when the video is posted and cut. Sorry for the jump cut here. The next thing I wanna talk about is your return on time. I just had to do that rough cut because I started rambling and I went in a totally different direction that was not helpful at all to this video. So let's go ahead and jump back into my Evernote here. 
we have three videos and I want to look at the return on time. So we have a mega tutorial, a review video, and a long tutorial. I'm not going to be sharing the names of these videos just because someone with malicious intent could come and like cut me off at the knees with all of these experiments or just try and duplicate the videos, which is something I've actually seen happen to larger channels. And it's just, it's just not cool. I'm sharing, I'm sharing this data to help you versus, you know, someone with malicious intent coming and trying to just copy someone else's content. So we have a mega tutorial, a review video, and a long tutorial. And the timestamps in the titles are just how long the video actually was. So what I wanted to look at is, okay, how much money do we actually make per video in the context of time invested? So the mega tutorial video, you can see here, it took 40 hours to put together. The review video only took six hours and 10 hours. And this is from idea to posted to YouTube, the whole nine yards. So over a 12 month period, we're looking at how much money do we expect the video to make. And I chose 12 months because it's not reasonable to think a video is going to last a super long time, especially with a review video, software is always changing. And the two tutorials, you know, software is always changing, right? So we're gonna assume that the last about a year and we're looking at $600 to $1,300, which sounds like a lot of money. Like, wow, I just make a video and I post it. But in the context of how long it takes, that's really where the numbers got interesting for me because the mega tutorial actually had the lowest return on my time, even though I think it has the highest value in terms of content delivered. And it's gotten a lot of positive feedback on that video versus the review video. You know, that's just me doing one of my top five reasons to use software X or top five reasons not to use, you know, software Y that had a return on my time of $230. And this actually gets into something I talked about a few weeks ago with the YouTube algorithm really liking certain types of content and the types of content I like producing and you find really helpful, the YouTube algorithm doesn't. And so this is a perfect example of how YouTube is incentivizing me to make those clickbaitish type videos and not so much the mega tutorials or even the long tutorial that's really most helpful to you. So I don't have a specific takeaway or big action item. I just wanted to share these numbers with you and show you the experiment and what's possible. And of course, really keep in mind the context of how much time and effort it takes to make a video and how much you're actually receiving a return on your time. Because I see a lot of other YouTubers do income reports and they show they're making hundreds or thousands of dollars per video, but it's never put in the context of how long it actually took to make that video because Take, only taking six hours and making 1300 bucks on a video, that's definitely an outlier. Most of the videos that are in the top 10 or 15 are much closer to that 10 to 15 hour range. And when you do the math, it's like 30 to $60 an hour, depending upon how much it's making. And that actually leads me into a big stupid mistake I made last month. And actually this is how the YouTube content, this little experiment actually saved this channel and embarrassingly my business because I almost went broke last week because I counted my chickens before they hatched. I had a couple deals in the pipeline. Some of the other ones didn't work out, but I wasn't really counting on them. And there was one in particular where I got a verbal yes. We had all the terms. We were at the finish line. The only thing left, there was just one thing left was for them to cut the check. That was it. And they'd always cut the check in the past. So I just assumed this would be like the last, I don't know how many times. And it wasn't. Turns out it was not. In fact, I still haven't heard back. It was like they just dropped off the face of the earth and I was left looking like a complete idiot and feeling like a complete idiot because I had made a lot of adjustments and actually said no to some things because this particular client who I've worked with a lot of times in the past said that they were ready and willing to go to the next level. It was gonna be a massive project. It was like one of those dream things where you go, yes, I've made it as an entrepreneur. No, 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 didn't. So I actually, I, I actually was so depressed. I went and got a credit card uh, just, to, just to keep the lights on and, and not fire anyone. The good news is that enabling monetization across the entire channel produced enough income where I did have to reduce everyone's hours. And when I say everyone, there's like three people, full-time people or part-time people on my team. So I, we had to reduce all our hours across the board and we had to make some cuts in terms of some of the other marketing efforts we were doing, but we're able to keep the lights on. So I just want to share that with you. Hopefully you continue to watch and you know support the, uh, support the channel. 
But I, I did make a commitment to you, and this is one of those times where I'm like, why did I start a vlog? Because now I have to share the dumb A mistake that I made. So if you can take something from this video, you know, take all that YouTube stuff for whatever it's worth, but I think the biggest takeaway is just don't count your chickens before they hatch until the check is in your bank account. Doesn't matter how much you trust them, doesn't matter how many times they paid you in the past, just once the check hits, then you start work, then you start go, actually we didn't start work, but then, then you change your plans, then you readjust. And I, I, uh, I didn't, I, I just assumed uh, that uh, they would they would do the same thing that they had always done and and I was wrong so I just want to share that lesson with you and really just be as transparent as possible saying I don't have it all figured out I sometimes I lose I take my eye off the ball I assume something's handled and I come back and I go oh no that's that's on fire so we definitely had a bit of a fire sale last week but we are still limping along and that's that's kind of how entrepreneurship is at times. And so if you've ever found yourself in that situation or you're looking at the upcoming expenses, what you have to pay people and the bank balance and the leads in the pipeline, you're like, I don't know how the frick this is gonna work. Well, uh, you're, you're, you're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone and it doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. There are a lot of potholes and sometimes the whole thing burns down and you just have to, to start over again. So. Until the next video, I hope you keep liking and subscribing. Keep building the business you love.